In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get 3DS emulation set up on the Xbox Series X and S. Thanks to the introduction of Mesa on Xbox Series X and S, new things have been possible, and one of these new things is the introduction of Citra for RetroArch being usable on Xbox Series X and S consoles. As of making this video, the Citra implementation is a bit interesting, but it does play everything I've thrown at it pretty well. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the specific build of RetroArch installed to run it. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, before we dive in, there are a couple of things you're going to need. The first of which being an Xbox Series X or S. This does not work with Xbox One systems and the CPU inside those systems would be too crap to really run games at full speed anyway. So on your Xbox Series X or S, you are going to need to have dev mode installed if you do not already have it. If you do not already have dev mode installed, I will link to my dev mode and RetroArch emulation setup guide. So you can follow along with this, get everything set up, and then continue along with this video. I'm not gonna have those steps repeated here just to save time for the people who are already there. You are also going to need to have a properly formatted USB drive. So I have that covered in this setup video as well, or just separate setup videos in my Xbox emulation playlist if needed. But go ahead and get your Xbox Series X or S booted up and brought to the dev mode home screen. Once your Xbox is booted up to the dev mode home screen, we're gonna go ahead and download the Citra version of RetroArch from the Xbox Dev Store. So link to this in the description below. But just go ahead and scroll down to the emulator section here. And right here you will see Citra Alpha RetroArch. So again, this is a separate RetroArch install that will only run Citra. Now pay attention to the warnings that are listed here at the time of your download. I don't know what's going to change in the next couple of weeks, months, years, depending on how much I need to update this video. But as of right now, there is a bug inside the Citra core where you need to disable hardware shaders. And this can be interesting and we'll, I'll show you what I mean by that in a little bit when we're actually covering more of the setup. But again, Xbox Series consoles only, no Xbox One. But just go ahead and click on the download button here. Download from here. And once it's downloaded, go ahead and get it extracted using your favorite zip folder program thing, whatever. And inside the folder, you'll find your RetroArch Citra app. So now back on your Xbox Series X or S, make note of your remote access IP address and get that typed into a web browser and logged into the Xbox device portal. On the Xbox device portal, click on add, and you can either drag your Citra app into the little box here or click on choose file, navigate to where it's stored, and then choose the app there. Once selected, click on next. There's no dependencies for this one, so click on start. Once the package has finished installing, you'll see package successfully registered, so just click on done, and we are now done with the Xbox device portal for this video. So now back on your Xbox, we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that RetroArch Citra is set to be a game and not an app under its UWP type. So pressing the view back button, whatever, go down to view details and change the UWP type from app to game. And as always, I like to restart the console after doing this. Not necessary, just a me thing. And now that my console's rebooted, just gonna make sure that it's set itself to game still. Perfect, awesome. All right, so now that we got RetroArch Citra installed, let's go ahead and get our 3DS game set up on our USB drive. So you're going to need to source your own 3DS games. They need to be in .3DS format and they need to be decrypted ROMs. On my channel, I do have a guide on how to back up your own 3DS games from cartridge in a decrypted format to use with Citra emulation like this. So link to this video will be in the description below, or you can resort to the Googles. I really don't care how you go about finding these things, but don't ask me for illegal download links as I will never provide them. But from here, go ahead and plug your Xbox USB drive into your computer, and then just store your 3DS games anywhere inside of it. So I have a games folder here. So I'm just gonna copy my 3DS folder right on in here because there is not a pre-made 3DS folder as part of the Xbox formatting tool yet. And once you have those games copied over, if you haven't set up a RetroArch folder yet, I would really suggest doing so. Just make a folder named RetroArch and have different folders in here like assets, cheats, config, info logs, overlays, playlists, saves, shaders, states, system, and thumbnails. We're not gonna be using the assets folder for this video because this specific build of RetroArch actually can't use the assets, but we'll go over that more in a second. But once you have your games and you have that RetroArch folder set up, go ahead and take that USB drive out of your computer, move it back over to your Xbox. So getting your USB drive plugged into your Xbox, if you haven't already selected it as media storage, go ahead and do so now. You wanna choose media, not game, otherwise everything you did will be deleted. Now, before we boot up into RetroArch Citra, there is something I need to make note of here. 
If you have your system set to 4K, when you load up a 3DS game, chances are it might break. At least that's what's happening to me at the time I'm making this video. If I have my resolution set to 4K, games will fail to load. 1440p also has this issue, so head into your settings, and when you want to run 3DS games, make sure your Xbox is set to 1080p output, at least for the time being. If it works for you under 4K, awesome, you don't need to worry about that. But anyway, getting booted up into RetroArch Citra, we're going to head over to the settings page here, and we're going to go into the directories and change some things around so we don't have to worry about ever losing our save files and things like that for Citra. So just going to set my system BIOS folder to E RetroArch system. We're going to skip over the assets because we actually cannot update the assets as of making this video. It will break this build of RetroArch, so we do not want to touch that. But things like thumbnail, we could just keep, click on parent directory to get back to the root directory. And then select our thumbnails folder. Config files, same thing, parent directory. Change it over to our USB drive. Do not touch cores, do not do it. Core info, we can change this over to our USB drive. So just run through and change over all the folders to USB, especially the save folder. And once you have all of these folders moved over, just go ahead and press B. Head up to the main menu. Quit out of RetroArch, load it back up. And then just double check that your stuff has actually saved to being on the USB drive. Once you can confirm that, you're good to go. Now on the main menu, we're going to go to the online updater. And we're going to update our core info files, as this is what allows RetroArch to detect our 3DS games. Once downloaded, go ahead and quit out and load back in. The core info files don't always work when you initially download them, so doing a restart can be required. But you can make sure that it works just by going into load core, and if it looks like this where it says Nintendo-3DS Citra, you know you're good. Now if you'd like to, you could come in and change some other things about RetroArch, just like you would on the default RetroArch install. So I'm going to go ahead and change some menu item visibility here because I really don't like it. So we don't need the core downloader right now because this build doesn't support much. There we go. And then I'm also going to go into video and enable integer scaling. This is an option I like to have for the best possible video output. It does result in black borders, so a lot of people will not like this, so just decide for yourself. And then under synchronization, going to turn on automatic frame delay just to help out with some input lag. Under input, going to change up my hotkeys here. So menu toggle controller combo. This is set to start and select by default. I'm just going to change this to L3R3 for my personal use. You can choose between any of these for yourselves. Then I'm going to have a hotkey enable set and I'm going to just set some hotkeys here. There we go. And that's all I'm really going to worry about for my Citra RetroArch setup. But once set, go ahead and save your current configuration and then restart RetroArch for the changes to take effect. So there we go. A lot cleaner to look at. From here, we are free to begin loading up 3DS content. So one method of doing so is to go to load content, head down to your E drive, navigate to your games folder and find your Nintendo 3DS games. Then you can just select the game and it should boot right up. Since that method is pretty long-winded, I'm just going to head down to import content. Now from here, head down to manual scan, content directory, navigate to your 3DS games folder. Tell it to scan this directory. Now under system name, since we can't download the RetroArch assets file, we're not going to get a nice looking playlist to begin with. So I'm just going to tell it to name the system after my content directory. Default core, going to choose Nintendo 3DS. If you have your game separated into subfolders, make sure scan recursively is turned on. And then just tell it to start the scan. And so that leaves us with a nice 3DS playlist entry here with all of our games, like so.
You can add thumbnails to this playlist if desired, but to keep this video a bit more brief, we're gonna go ahead and skip over that. But anyway, now we are gonna go ahead and load up a game from our playlist just by pressing A and then pressing A on Run. And that will boot us into our 3DS game. As of making this video, there is a hardware shader bug. So as you can see on the Ocarina of Time 3D screen here, it is looking a little awkward in a lot of areas. And we were warned about this on the download page, so we're gonna have to go into the RetroArt Quick Menu to change this, but as of this build, that's a little difficult. You can see that it's just not looking quite right here. So I'm gonna show you what you have to do. You need to move down four options from the top. So one, two, three, four, press A. And now to make our lives easier, we're going to move down three options. One, two, three, and press A. Now from here, go ahead and press B, move back up to the top, go down one option and press A to restart the game. Now this turns off the hardware renderer and that makes it so games are not playable. So we're not gonna play games like this, don't worry. But when we go back into the quick menu, hey, we can see our options again. And this lets us change what we actually need to change to get 3DS emulation up and running. So we're gonna go down to core options. And as of this version and this video, we have to disable enable hardware shaders. We need to turn that off. We're also gonna turn the hardware renderer back on. And then we could also go ahead and change our resolution scaling factor. I don't really recommend going above two or three X at the moment. I've had great success with two X so far. But the right analog function is also another one that you're going to be very interested in, depending on if you're playing C-Stick enabled games or just need to use the touchscreen. So it's set to C-Stick and touchscreen pointer by default, but you could change this to just be a touchscreen pointer or the C-Stick as needed. I'm going to leave it on C-Stick and touch point for the moment, but you also want to turn on render simulated touchscreen interactions. And then you could also change the dead zone of the pointer if needed. And then you could also change your 3DS system model. I don't know if this breaks anything or not. I haven't done enough testing on this, but then you could also go in and change your region and language. And we're not gonna be covering any custom texture stuff with this version. We're gonna wait until it gets a little more stable before diving into that. But once you have everything set the way you need, you can head up to manage core options and you can either save these on a game by game basis or if you have all of your 3DS games in one folder, you could just save the content directory options. So that way all your 3DS games will be good to go from the start. But once the core option has been saved, you can go ahead and restart the emulator. And you can see we now have a pointer on our touch screen here so we can now use it. And thanks to those hardware shaders being disabled, you can see that the start screen here on Ocarina of Time 3D is not miscolored and looking kind of funky. But just to show that the touchscreen works, you just click down with the right analog stick, you can move the cursor with your right thumbstick, and it all works exactly as intended. And here we are playing Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D on an Xbox Series S. Like, this is really awesome. I haven't tried the most 3DS games yet, but the ones I've tried have all had very solid performance, and the experience has been quite nice overall. But as you can see, every function we need to play the games is here. So for example, we can equip our Kokiri sword. No problem. And again, performance so far has been really solid. I've beaten the first dungeon on this and been good. Now, unfortunately, if you want to change games that you're playing, this version of RetroArch is not equipped to handle that. When you tell it to close out of the content, it just freezes. So you are going to have to manually quit out of the app and load back in every time you want to change games. Current limitations, so hoping to see that fixed sooner rather than later. But now let's go ahead and give you an example of a game that uses the C-Stick for commands here. So we're just going to load up Ace Combat Legacy. All right, so here we are in Ace Combat Assault Horizon. So as you can see, we have all of our normal circle pad controls here going on. And this game does support the Circle Pad Pro. So if we use our right analog stick, you can see that we are moving it down there on the touch screen still, and we can even use it to select things like we normally could if available. 
But you can also see we are able to move the cockpit camera around because it is set also to be our C-Stick. So great way to get functionality for both out of this. Now one more thing y'all might be interested in knowing is how to swap the screen positions for games that might prioritize top or bottom screen. You just click down on your left analog stick to do so. But that pretty much sums it up for basic Xbox 360 3DS emulation. I'm hoping this video helps you get your 3DS games up and running, and I look forward to revisiting this system more in the future when things get a little more stable. But here at the end, the usual favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Load's always coming your way, and I appreciate everyone joining us along for the ride. If you'd like to further help support the channel and keep it going, you can check out the join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen as every little bit helps keeps this place going. Big shout out to all of our current backers, thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going for so long. But until next time, wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.